As you may already know, home espresso machines come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and prices. But the Gaja Classic Pro has found itself in a bit of a category all on its own. Off the shelf, it's an attainable, affordable, and capable entry-level espresso machine. Which is why, even after last month's comparison with the Mini, I felt like it was appropriate to go into a solo review of the Gaja. For one, there were topics that didn't make the comparison that I still feel are relevant for those who are in the market for a Gaja like temperature stability, steaming milk, and just some good old fashioned pros and cons. And finally, some much needed clarification from my somewhat controversial disposable statement I made in the previous video. So let's just dive straight in. There's a lot to like about the Gaja Classic Pro. For one, it's got plug and play simplicity. Once it's filled up and powered on, it'll be warmed up and ready to brew in just a few minutes. And the espresso that it brews straight from the box is actually pretty solid. It hits all of the right numbers when it comes to extraction, creates nice dense crema, and generally pulls some tasty shots. But with a couple of inexpensive and easy to do mods, it will come into its own and give many more expensive espresso machines a run for their money. Which leads me into another pro, the large amount of aftermarket upgrades and accessories. Since it uses the commercial standard size 58mm portafilter, it means you have a vast array of options for tampers, tools, and all the other off-the-wall accessories that many home espresso machines in its price range tend to miss out on. On top of the large aftermarket, there is an equally large community and knowledge base to help everyone through tasks as simple as troubleshooting your espresso to installing modifications. And personally, I kind of like the look of it. It's got a handsome profile, some nice rounded edges, a few chrome accents, and comes in some appealing colors. But as you likely realize, I'm pretty partial to the white. Now that you've been introduced to the Gaja's positives, let's go into the downsides that are coming along for the ride. If you've looked up the Gaja Classic online, you've likely heard the term temperature surfing, which isn't as fun as it sounds. So basically the machine sits at a temperature and goes up and down. You'll likely notice the brew light going on and off. It seems that there may be a few different techniques to surfing on the Gaja, but many users will grind and prep their espresso, then run the group for a few seconds to push the machine to reheat. Then, as soon as the brew light pops back on, immediately pull the shot. This technique ensures you're getting a high enough brew temp for a full and flavorful extraction. This is because if the water isn't at its peak temp, the shots can come out a little sour, especially if you're brewing medium to lighter roasts. But this instability can also put a damper on dialing in or making multiple shots back to back. Also, out of the box, the Gaja is set to 15 bars of pressure, so dropping that down to the traditional 9 or even lower will likely result in better shots unless you plan on using the pressurized basket. Shades of Coffee in the UK sells a set of open pressure valve springs that take just minutes to install, even for me, and will get you the classic 9 bars or for those who like to explore pressure, six and a half and five. Personally, I installed the six and a half bar spring and have been very happy with the results, not only in the cup, but also with the clean bottomless pulls. Since the Gaja clocks in at a relatively light 20 pounds, and is ran using a vibration pump, it makes a good amount of noise when running, so hopefully your family and roommates are heavy sleepers. I also find it kind of odd when espresso water tanks aren't fully sealed off from their surroundings. Thinking about all the dust, microscopic skin particles, and cat hair that makes its way into the water kind of grosses me out. Gaja advertises a commercial style steam wand, but the steaming capability leaves something to be desired. Of course, as a single boiler espresso machine, you'll need to do it either before or after you make espresso. Flip the switch on the steam and then get to it. I also find the steam wand kind of hard to use, as it only rotates and doesn't angle or move up and down, so I find myself sometimes having to move the machine to find a comfortable steaming position. It seems like the steam pressure just drops really quickly. Hitting it hard from the start feels like the way to go, but it'll take some time to master that technique, especially if you're used to having a bit more finesse with your steam. Personally, I'm still on the back end of that learning curve. 
and struggling to find a consistent stride for that glossy latte art foam, but I'm getting there. And finally, the group has very little clearance, especially if you're using the included spouted portafilter. So using a scale to weigh your shot, or maybe brewing in your favorite mug, it can be a bit of a hassle. So investing in a bottomless portafilter is likely something most users will want to do. In the end, I think the Gaja is a good machine. It's not perfect, but nothing is. It looks good and it produces quality espresso straight from the box but it also has a lot of room to grow with you as a home barista if you're willing to put in a little cash and tool time. From simple mods like baskets and screens to things a little more involved like better temperature control and pressure profiling. That said, I do stand by the comment I made in the comparison video about the Gaja being disposable. Now when I said that, I guess I didn't flesh out the nuance of that statement, so now I'm gonna tell you why I said it and why I still stand by it. Since the release of that video, I had many comments and messages ranging from polite to something else, all from people with Gaja classics that are 10 to 20 years old. But I think the main point of my statement kinda got lost in the sauce. I wasn't saying you couldn't get a Gaja to last, but I do think it's fair to say it wasn't built to do that. Regardless of how simple it may be to repair and to keep running, that isn't what Gaja wants or aimed for, based on the parts and components they chose to use, which I feel is underscored by the fact they don't really sell parts on their site outside of basic maintenance. Of course, part of this whole thought process for Gaja, I'm sure, was to keep it broadly affordable. But the other aspect is making it appeal to a wider audience. It's lovely to imagine that all of the people who enjoy making their morning coffee are sitting down to watch our bespeckled messiah talk about the nuances of espresso, or browsing coffee forums, troubleshooting issues, and sourcing replacement wiring harnesses. But face it, we're the minority. So in my opinion, the mass majority of Gaja Classic owners are simply buying a kitchen appliance, nothing more. They'll get a few years of use out of it, but once it kicks the bucket, they'll dump it in the bin and they'll get another one or something else. But that's just my two cents. And on that note, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Gaja Classic? What are your thoughts on home espresso machines in general? Do you have any questions, any comments about them? Of course, drop them in the comment section down below and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spromethius, for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.